I love going out and shooting and capturing content, but I think my favorite part of the process is actually back here at home at my desk, going through everything that I've captured and kind of bringing it to life with my editing process. And today I'm gonna to show you how to edit drone photos like a pro using Adobe Lightroom. So I just got back from a little trip down south with some friends, I captured some awesome content and I've chosen one photo from that trip today to show you how I edit. And I'm gonna show you how to take this shot here and transform it into this shot here. So when I got back from my trip, I actually had this guy here waiting for me in the mail. This is the new Tab S7 Plus from Samsung. I've never actually owned a tablet before and I've never edited on a tablet. So I figured for today's video, instead of editing on a laptop like we usually would, why don't we test out this guy? It comes with a little pen here, which will come in really handy for all our different adjustment layers and adjustment brushes and stuff like that. So let's jump into Lightroom on the tablet and see how we go. All right, so I've got my photo imported into Lightroom and the first thing that I'm going Going to want to do is crop it so that our subject is perfectly in the center of the frame here so I'm going to go over to crop and I'm going to lock onto the original aspect ratio and then I'm just going to adjust and center our subject perfectly in the middle of the frame that looks pretty good just to improve our composition a little bit and draw our focus to that main subject in the center of the frame so the first step that I like to take is I like to go into the light panel and I like to adjust my tone curve so I'll make one adjustment at the bottom here, which is our shadows. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit, make another point here and bring that down and then bring our mid-tones back up to add a nice bit of crunch and give our image a little bit more brightness and a little bit more life. And by bringing up this bottom half of the curve here, you're just gonna bring up the shadows, which is gonna give us a little bit more detail and a little bit of fade which I quite like the look of in these drone photos. All right, so once that's done, I wanna change the color of the water and kind of bring that to life. So instead of painting over the water or going in and adjusting the blue slider and adding saturation to it, what I'm actually going to do is create a radial mask over the center of our subject. And I draw a little circle over the center of our subject here. Let me zoom in, invert that, meaning that everything that's covered in red is what we're gonna affect when we adjust our sliders. So I'm just gonna zoom in and what I'm actually going to do before we make any adjustments is I'm gonna feather that so that it falls off a little easier and it's kind of covering all the water there. And if it covers a little bit of the subject, it doesn't matter, we'll just erase that afterwards. So there we go. Everything in red is going to be affected now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into light and I'm going to boost the exposure just a little bit just to bring the brightness of that water up a touch. And I might also just bring down the temperature to make it a little bit more blue because at the moment it's a bit too green for my liking. And in real life it was a little more blue and a little more tropical. So I'm going to bring that down a touch. I might just go down to the effects tab and add a touch of clarity just to bring out even more of those really nice water patterns that we've got there. So if I hold down, you can see we've already made a considerable difference just to the overall look and feel. It's a lot more vibrant, a lot more poppy. But what we want to do now is add some depth and some interest and a few more elements that's really going to make our image pop. So looking at this photo, I can see that the light source is naturally coming from the right hand side of the frame. So what I want to do is I want to kind of exaggerate that and bring that to life. And you can do this a few different ways, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a graduate, a couple of different graduated filters to try and bring in some shadows to the left of our image and then bright up the right side of our image which is going to give us a nice contrast and then draw our attention to the subject in the middle of the frame so like we did with the radial filter we'll go over to the adjustments we're going to get our graduated filter and i'm just going to draw this and feather it across half of our frame there and i'm going to tilt that so you can kind of see already just where that red is there's a bit of a gradual fade towards the shoreline and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the exposure there. So this is already just adding a lot more life and transforming the image and just giving it a little bit more interest and making the water look a little less flat. So I'm gonna bring that down there. And again, I might bring down the temperature a little bit just to make it a bit more blue. All right, so I'm gonna repeat this process a couple of times and add a few more graduated filters just to really exaggerate the light and the shadows of our image. So let's do that light exposure down again i might bring that back and feather it a little bit more and i'm gonna add a little bit of 
black just to crunch down that corner there and make it a little more bluey. So then that blue is fading in as well and leaking in towards the shoreline. And lastly, I might just add a touch of saturation. So you can see that the graduated filter is just kind of stretched over that bottom half of the image and it's feathered out towards the shoreline just to add a lot more depth and a lot more contrast to the flat water that we had before. So if I tap before and after, you can see immediately how much we've just transformed the image by changing the color and also just the way that we're using the light and the shadows in our image. So the last thing that I'll probably do here is add one more radial filter to act as our sun or our light source coming from the right of frame, which is just gonna try and sell that gradient effect a little bit better. So if I draw a radial filter here, so let's pretend that this radial filter is our sun shining in from the top of our frame, bring that down so it's just over the shoreline and the water, and then I'm gonna increase the exposure of that so it looks like a bright sun is shining down onto the ocean there and I might add a little bit of warmth as well just to sell the effect that that's our sun. All right, so if I show you before and after right now, you can see what a huge difference that's already had. I wanna kind of bring out our subject in the middle a little bit more. I think he deserves to be highlighted a touch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go into our color slider. So you can see if I slide the saturation slider of the orange, you can see we're either making him really tanned or really white and pasty like me. I'm gonna make him look a little bit more tan because this is a nice summery bright image. And I'm gonna play around with the luminance a little bit to a point where I'm happy. We don't want to make him sunburnt. He looks super sunburnt there. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to dive into these aqua tones as well. And then I'm just going to further boost the saturation of our water from there. And that really kind of brings that to life and makes it pop. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. I think it's not a bad for a first attempt editing on a tablet. So you can see here side by side, final comparison of the photos, a few small adjustments, and we've really taken our image from something that looks super flat and bland, a great shot, but we really brought it to life and kind of gave it a little bit more character and a little bit more interest with a few slight adjustments. So all these adjustments that I've made in this video and on this photo can be done on Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom Classic, and I've actually created a whole bunch of my own drone filters specifically for drone photos that you can buy as presets to throw on. There's different looks on there, which is gonna be great for beach shots, different types of landscapes. So if you're interested in that and you're looking for a quick, easy way to achieve this look, check out the link down in the description. I'll leave all the information there. So if you did learn something from this video, hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already for more photography and filmmaking content and I will see you in the next video.